Good morning, good afternoon, and or good evening, my friends, whenever you are watching this video. Welcome back to Math Time with me, Ms. X. I'm super excited to have you all here. Let's go ahead and jump straight into our objectives. Remember, our objective is always broken up into three separate parts so we know exactly how we're going to do something, what it is that we need to understand about it, and why we're doing it or why it's important. Now, you may read with me or in your head as I read out loud to you. I will use arrowway, number bonds, or tape diagram to solve one step and two step word problems in order to improve my understanding of place values. My friends, we will gain a deeper and better understanding of place values as we use arrows, as we use arrowway, number bonds, and tape diagrams to count up and down in our in our word problems so let's jump straight into the teacher model all right friends and families welcome to the teacher model for the teacher model we are working on a word problem as we will for the next few parts of the teacher model go ahead and take a look at our word problem here you may read with me or in your head as i read out loud to you don has 34 brownies he bakes 22 more how many brownies does he have now? My friends, you guys already know, great mathematicians, we always go back and reread the problem. We circle important numbers, and lastly, we underline our question. So let's go ahead and do that. Don has 34 brownies. Already, I see something that I need to circle, which is our number 34. He bakes 22 more. I need to circle 22, and don't don't neglect the word more here he bakes 22 more that tells me hmm i'm probably going to need that word later on so i'm going to circle that as well because it's part of my word or it's part of my number 22. how many brownies does he have now that's our question my friends before we move on i want you to think to yourself are they in this question are they asking us to solve for the whole or the part Talk to a friend or family member, and then we will do it together. Welcome back, friends. Yes, you are correct if you were thinking that they are asking us to solve for the whole. So we're going to go ahead and write a W so we know that we're solving for the whole. For this word problem, we are actually going to use the arrow way. And you'll remember that in our objective, I talked about the three different strategies that we would be using in today's lesson. I'm going to show you the arrow way with this problem. So we know that Don had 34 brownies to start, right? And we know that he decides to bake 22 more. That can be really scary and really long if we choose to draw 22 more. That's very difficult, okay? So we're going to, in our in our arrow way here, we're going to look at the place value of 22. How many tens are in the number 22? There's two tens. Two tens is the same thing as 20. So 34 and 20, that's five. I see three and two in the tens place. That's five tens. And then four and zero, that's four ones. I'm going to keep going. I'm not quite done yet because I've only added 20 cookies so far. There's still two more cookies left over, so I have to add those. So 54 and 2 gives me 56. 56 is going to be my final solution. Now we're going to go ahead and write that in a word form, or sorry, in a word sentence. Our question reads, how many brownies does he have now? We know who he is. He is Don. So Don has 56, box in your solution, brownies now. Complete sentence with a period. Don't forget to also underline your unit, which is brownies in this word problem. Okay, my friends, welcome to the next part of the teacher model. We have a new word problem now. So read with me or in your head as I read out loud to you. Sam has... 46 red apples and some green apples. He has a total of 88 apples. How many green apples does he have? 
my friends, great mathematicians, we got to go back and reread that word problem. Number two, we have to go back and circle all the important numbers we see and pay attention to the operation words as well. And then lastly, we have to underline our question. So let's go ahead and do that. Sam has 46 red apples. Skirt, pause right there. We have an important number already, 46. Sam has 46 red apples and some green apples. Now we don't really know what that is, but we do know that the word some is really important. So some, some green apples. I don't know how many. We're going to figure that out. He has a total of 88 apples. Actually, we're going to go ahead and, sorry about that. We're going to go ahead and circle some green all the way because 46 red is different from some green. It helps us tell the different apples apart. How many green apples does he have? That's our question. Now, my friends, now that we've underlined our question, I want you to think to yourself, are they asking us to solve for the part or the whole? Tell a friend or a family member and then we will talk about it together as a team. Welcome back, my friends. If you were thinking that they are asking us to solve for a part, you are correct because in this second sentence right here, they told us that they told us that Sam has a total of 88 apples. That's the whole. We are not solving for the whole. Now, we know we are solving for the part because they already gave us the whole. For this problem, we are going to use our tape diagrams. Now, we did those a long time ago. So, we're going to go back and try to use that again, and we're going to review our tape diagrams. Ready? With our tape diagrams, well, actually, let's take our time with that. With our tape diagram here, we know that they had, or that Sam had 88 apples total. And we know that this is the red apples. And with the red apples, we know that he had 46. So we know that he had 46. Now, we don't know though how many green apples he had. We don't know that. My friends, we already know that there's 46 for the red apples. Like, there are 46 red, red apples, but we don't know how many green apples there are. We do know that overall there are 88 apples. What we're going to do is we are going to use our quick 10 drawings within these small boxes to help us figure out how many, how many green apples Sam has. So let's see, we have 46 and I'm going to use a quick 10 drawing, 56, 66, 76, 86. I'm so close, 87, 88. Oh my goodness, my friends. So if these are quick tens and these the dots represent our ones, how many green apples does Sam have? Good job. 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42. Sam has 42 green apples. Go ahead and write that up there and box it in. Do not erase the question mark so you know that that's the part you solved for. Going back to our question now, which is how many green apples does he have? Let's answer that in a complete sentence. Sam, because we know who he is. He is Sam. Sam has 42 green apples go ahead and box in 42 because that's our solution and then underline apples because that's our overall unit all right my friends let's go ahead and begin the last part of our teacher model here there are two parts to this question we're going to look at the first part of part a read with me or in your head as i read out loud to you there are 31 students on the red bus. There are 29 more students on the yellow bus than on the red bus. 
How many students are on the yellow bus? Great mathematicians, we always go back and reread the problem, underline the question, and circle important numbers. So let's do that for both, for part A first, and then we will do that for part B once we start part B. There are 31 students on the red bus. There are 29 more students on the yellow bus than on the red bus. How many students are on the yellow bus? My friends, based on our question here, what do you think we are going to be solving for? Are we going to be solving for the whole or the part? Tell a friend or a family member first and then we will talk about it together as a team. Welcome back friends. If you were thinking that we are going to be solving for the whole, you thought correctly. Now I'm going to tell you why we're solving for the whole and not the part. You will see very shortly with our picture. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. We know that there are, so I have an R there for red. We know that there are 31 students. There are 31 students on the red bus. Now for the yellow bus, we don't quite know how many there are there on the whole bus, but we do know that they have the 31 students plus more. How many more? Well, I'm glad you asked. 29 more to be exact. If you take a look at that second sentence, it says there are 29 more students on the yellow bus than on the red bus. So there's a lot of kids on this yellow bus, far more than there are on the red bus. And that's how we know that we're going to be solving for the whole. When we are solving for the whole, that often tells us that we're actually going to be solving with addition. So let's go ahead and write that down. 31 plus 29, because that's coming from the 29 and I will change that to green so that we know it's separate or that it's going to be part of the yellow bar 31 plus 29 my friends now this can be tricky or it can be easy let's go ahead and break up our 31 into 30 and 1 so by our place values and let's go ahead and combine our 29 and our 1 to make 30 now we have 30 plus 30. So let's write that new number sentence. 30 plus 30 equals 60. Great job. So our number sentence, our number sentence is 30 plus 30 equals 60. That's the new bundling that we did to make it easier to add. Now we're going to write our word sentence. There are 60 students on the yellow bus. Box in your solution, underline your unit, which is students, because we're counting students. Moving on to part B of our teacher model here, you may read with me or in your head as I read out loud to you. How many students are on both buses combined? Now, great mathematicians, we're going to go back and reread that. There aren't any numbers to underline, or I'm sorry, to circle, but we do have a question to underline and we can reread it. So let's do that. How many students are on both buses combined? Let's underline that question. And what we do want to do though is Pay attention to important words. Combined is an important clue word that tells us we are going to be solving for a whole. Now let's use a type tape diagram that looks a bit like the first one that we did a, a while back in the video. That's what we call a tape diagram that looks similar to a number bond. We know that on the red bus there were 31 kids. We know after solving that on the yellow bus, there were 60 kids. So what's our whole? 
And I'm also going to put just part and part there and then hole here so that we know and remind ourselves that we are solving for the hole. I'm going to use the arrow way to help me solve this one because I think it's just easier. So you may follow me as well. Our number sentence or our number bond is going to be thirty one and sixty with us solving for the whole. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with sixty. It's much faster for me to start at 60 because it's the bigger number, 60. And then we're going to make sure that we jump 31 in order to add the 31 students. So 60 plus 30, that's going to put me at 90. And then we still have a one left over. So I need to add that one. And you'll notice I did 30 jumps and then one jump to make sure that I added the 31 kids from the red bus. 90 plus one gives, gives or puts me at 91. Box in your solution, which is 91. Now let's go ahead and write down our word sentence. The question reads, how many students are on both buses combined? We're going to write, there are 91 students on both buses. Underline your unit, which is students. My friends, this X was silly and I totally forgot to fill in the hole for our mini, for our number bond that was in the corner of part B. I already erased it, but because you're not erasing it, don't forget that you need to add in your hole, which was 91. Because there are 91 students on both the red bus and the yellow bus. All right, my friends. So, as you move into independent practice and the exit ticket, I want you to keep these three things in mind. Number one, you can choose any of the strategies we have learned so far in this lesson. You'll also find yourself using other things like quick tens and stick sketches or make ten in the arrow way in the number bond or in the tape diagram that's okay that's what i did in so many of the teacher models you will use many of those skills in these three strategies okay number two circle important numbers underline the question and figure out whether you are solving for the part or the whole that makes a very big difference in how you will solve it number three write a complete Write a complete word sentence, boxing in the solution, as well as underlining the unit. Those things are very important. Do not forget any of these three things. Lastly, if you don't have a physical copy of the independent practice problem sets or the exit ticket, you can click the link in the description box below and it will take you to the worksheet. Don't worry about printing it. Just write down the problems on a separate piece of paper and solve it on your own the best that you can. Good luck, my friends. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in our next lesson.